Hi everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. This is Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. Today, I am again standing beside my beautiful 2005 Lamborghini Gallardo here, which happens to be covered up and kind of ready for, uh, I basically store it like this. But today I wanna to explain to you guys, I know I did a video a while ago on my personal buying experience of the Lamborghini Gallardo, but I don't think I was being fair to you guys and I probably wasn't being entirely fair um, in giving 100% of the story. I did a quick summary, it was a five minute video and I was able to cover some highlights. But today guys, I really wanna to explain to you how I bought the Lamborghini Gallardo. I wanna walk you through it from the first day till the last day where the car showed up here in my garage. I wanna walk you through step by step the different things that I experienced along the way and how I proceeded with purchasing the Lambo. So anyway, let's talk. Let's start from the beginning. And the beginning starts with up until I bought the Lambo, I was always a Porsche guy. I've owned Porsches for about 25 years. And then one day I just decided I want a Lamborghini. Well, when that day happened, I finally started to search. Well, of course, up to that time, there's always, when you're, you're not looking for something, you know how it works, when you're not looking for something, or you know, the old adage, when you're not looking for love, it's easy to find, but you know, anyway. But what it is, is what I'm trying to say is, there was lots of these, or I, what I perceived as lots of these around, you'd see them driving around, see some for sale, and then when it came time for me to make the plunge, I couldn't find any, or I had difficulty. I'd find one in a classified ad, I call about it and then it's gone. I'd find another one in a classified, well it turns out that one was expired, that classified ad. Then I call about another one, gone. Or I call about another one and I couldn't get a hold of the guy or it was some creepy story and it happened to live across the country so I couldn't really check into it too well. So I had a lot of hurdles. It actually felt like I was starting to wonder if this car was not for me. I actually had a lot of uphill battles getting to the point where I actually found some cars that I decided to actually take a closer look at. One of which, of course you guys all know, I live here in Alberta, here up in Canada. And I live in one of the, I live in the capital city here, of course. And there weren't many cars for sale here. Of course, when you're looking for Lambos and Ferraris, you have to spread your wings out a little bit. And that's what I did. So I took a trip one day to British Columbia, our neighboring province. But well, it's called province here in Canada, so we'll go with that. Anyway, so I took a vacation to British Columbia, and while I was on vacation, I decided to look around for some Lamborghinis. Well, when I did that, I stumbled across a couple of them. And I actually, this one in particular, like up to this point, before I bought this car, I had looked at a few other ones. I came across a black one in the other major city here in Alberta. The car was rough. Like it was, I mean, you can't go wrong with a black Lamborghini, but... The point of it was there was things missing, there was parts that were broken, and the car really looked kind of abused. It wasn't really taken care of. So I went for a drive, I enjoyed the experience, but I really knew that wasn't the car for me. Then I came across a blue one. The miles were a little higher. I knew historically I had heard through the grapevine that it had issues, and so I kind of passed on that one. Then I saw another one, a yellow manual and I kind of passed on that and I really thinking about it maybe I should have looked a little closer to that but it was across the country and the price was right but the problem with that was of course transporting it and I was getting close to the end of the year so it was becoming a bit of a problem considering how do we get that across the country so I kind of thought well I'll keep my eyes open here in western Canada so I did that and again on that trip to BC I came across this car this white one well I knew White, you'll see lots of white ones in the LP cars. You don't see a lot of white ones in the pre-LP cars like this, like an old four, five, six, seven, eight model years. And so I came across this white one. It wasn't necessarily the color I was looking for, but I knew white is not that common either. I thought it would be cool to have a white car like this. So that being said, I went to BC. I went, I came across this, and actually how I actually discovered this, I might as well back this up for a second, how I discovered the car was on Craigslist. And a lot of you guys probably are aware, Craigslist seems to have a bad reputation these days for 
you know, having creepy people lurking on Craigslist, looking for the victims, the little victim there that they can pounce on and take advantage of. There's a lot of bad stories I'm hearing. I saw this car on Craigslist. And when I called about it, I found it from this gentleman who just recently acquired it through some kind of a shady business deal, is what I understand. Now, that in itself kind of scared me off a little bit. And speaking with the guy on the phone, he actually sounded a little bit like, uh, I don't know, I got the sense he was kind of into uh, diverse business opportunities. He didn't seem to know a lot about it. He bought the, or he acquired the car a couple months prior and he was trying to flip it quickly. So the car was actually listed at that time for $110,000, Canadian dollars, of course. And which, I mean, actually was, was reasonable at that time because most of them were ranging from that $100,000 to about $120,000, $125,000 for an 05 like this with a similar case. But any, I ended up coming across this car had the right mileage. He was asking 110, but the problem was he didn't have a lot of history on it. He had no service records or very little. So I decided to take a leap of faith. I went down to visit the guy. Now this gentleman, he lived, in my opinion, in one of the most desirable places in Canada. He lived in the Okanagan, which is, it, it's, it's full of lakes and mountains and the summer seasons are very long there. And he lived waterfront. So it was a beautiful place to visit. But when we, when I had a look at the car initially, I walked up to it and thought, wow, this car really stood out to me. I love it. First impression was really good. But when I talked to the guy, he was kind of telling me some of the stories, and I won't kind of shed a lot of light on that, but some of the stories he was, exp he, he was telling me were a little bit uh, kind of questionable. And uh, the first thing he said, let's go for a drive. I'm like, okay, I'm in. Let's go for a drive. So I jump in the passenger seat. He takes over the wheel. And we go driving up through the neighborhood. And where if, if you've ever been up there, these are like the vineyards. So this is kind of like grape and wine territory here in Canada. And so there's a lot of vineyards. There's a lot of really narrow roads with high uh, grape vines and bush and stuff that go right up tight to the road. And there's not a lot of road space there. But what he ended up doing was he took me through a drive up the hills through some of the vineyard area. And... Hit a straightaway, and he's on it. First, second, third. And at this point, I'm ready to panic. I'm ready to jump out. I said in my comment to him was, I came to look at a car today. I didn't come here to die, actually. So he, he still didn't catch on to my drift. He just kept going, going, going. He was, I don't know if he was trying to impress me. To be honest, I'm not impressed. I didn't necessarily want to be buried in the car that day. So um, he did, we went for a hard drive, and then we basically cycled around and wound up back at his house. After that, he started getting quite pushy, kind of not unlike a Ford salesman, where, you know, they pounce on you in all kinds of all sorts of aggression. He came at me aggressively with, so you're ready to buy it? What is it going to take? What are your thoughts? Are you here to deal or are you not? Are you wasting my time? And he actually started coming on strong and then passive aggressive. And he was back and forth trying to be very intimidating and then aggressive at the same time. And I didn't... Got a little freaked out. So we went and had some chats in his office. He had an office that was part of his home. He was working out of the house. And he had a comment. He said, out of the blue, we're talking about the car. And I'm talking about prices and service and stuff. And then he talks to me about, he says, you know what? Um, do you want to see something? And I'm like, what, well, what, what do you mean by that? Well, he says, no, do you want to see something? Some pictures. Uh, sure. And then what he ends up doing is he flashes, poop, brings up the computer screen, and there's pictures of massive injuries by boat propellers. Okay. So what, what he had happened, apparently, this gentleman who was selling this car had previously been out boating with some friends who were... Maybe not 100% sober, but there was something. They were having a party on the lake, and they ended up wiping out. He wiped out. He was water skiing or, or wakeboarding. He wiped out. The boat circled around and went right over him. It basically shredded his legs, his arms. His... It's actually, he was even amazed that he was saved because it was a, a crazy experience. And I, 
he showed me these photos. When I saw these photos, I was ready to, I was ready to just not only just puke. I didn't know what to do. Puke, run, cry, scream. I don't know. It would all kind of hit me at once. It was disgusting. So anyway, I said, you know what? I'll tell you what. This is a bit much for me. This is a long day. I'm going to get back to you. So I buggered off. I went and finished the rest of my vacation. I left. He kept calling me. We kept in touch. He didn't want to talk too much negotiation. He kind of wanted to stay close to his price. Then I started asking him on the phone, what about you know service records? What about the clutch? Has that been done? Because that's a $10,000 job. What do you have for service records? Well, he had nothing. So time went on and about two months went on. We batted back and forth a couple of times. And it got to the point where he's like, look, it's the end of the year. I just want to make a deal. Talk to me. So what we ended up coming down to was I pulled all the records, I got the VIN numbers, I took that VIN number down to, did a car fax and a car proof. The car fax showed clear, it was good. And he said, oh, here's a copy of a car fax, we're good, right? Okay, fine. But I didn't end there, I actually pulled out a car proof for myself. And the car proof actually revealed uh, a little bit of an insurance claim, a comprehensive insurance claim, which would suggest it wasn't piled up but it probably had a repair due to, you know, um, you know, maybe getting sandblasted from some road rash or something, or possibly a windshield. Sometimes I guess what I heard is that a lot of people claim even the windshields that are worth five, six thousand dollars. Something happens to that, they'll claim that that goes on your comprehensive claim. So it didn't really specify, but it was a significant enough amount to ask, make me ask some questions. So I ended up calling CBC or IBC or whatever it was. And they had to clarify because the car proof only gave me limited information. I actually had to go specifically to the BC insurance companies to actually get the detail on it, pay it, spend a little more money there as well, and invest in the more in the documentation there. But after I did that, after I had received all this information, I got the gist. Overall, it seemed like a quality car. It ran well. It was straight. It sounded good. There was no leaks. The car proof showed me something, but it, it wasn't a, a, an amount that I was too worried about. So I was ready to possibly make a deal. Well, here we were, end of the summer, he was asking 110. I said, I'll tell you what, my last deal, I'm making you my last offer, $96,000. Guess what? He took it. So I ended up buying the car, $96,000. I came back. So I drove my truck through the mountains, the Rocky Mountains, with a car hauler trailer on the back. And driving there was quite uneventful. It was actually pretty straightforward. Getting to, to BC, of course, with an empty trailer. So I get there, we do the deal. I give him the certified bank draft, person, the certified check, whatever you want to call that. I handed it to him. He was happy. He helped me load the car up into the trailer. I strapped it all down. Got it buckled, of course you know the cross tie straps at the back you don't want the car moving around too much so took us a couple hours to properly secure it load it strap it down got it ready for transport so I had the Lambo in the back of the trailer and I had it attached to the truck well the afternoon was rolling the Sun was shining sure but I had a 12-hour drive in front of me so I hop into the truck and off I go and it must have been about four o'clock in the afternoon at that point so I start setting off. Well, the next 12 hours was somewhat eventful, actually relatively not too bad. Um, some of which I almost blew up the truck. It was overheating the truck trying to cross the mountains. Um, I almost burnt out the transmission. I could barely do more than 60 kilometers an hour up some of these passes with the truck. And if you, in case you were wondering what kind of truck it is, it's a Dodge pickup is what I was driving. But anyhow, so I was driving this truck and I was pulling and I could barely make some of these climbs. So finally I get over the mountain passes. Then I'm driving. I had to park one night on the side of the road and then keep on, you know, basically keep on hauling. When I get to one gas station, I go and look and I didn't even notice. There is this big bat like this sprawled across the grill of the truck. So I'm obviously, you know what, I can't... I gotta say, unfortunately, I took a little wildlife along the way. But other than that, it was a relatively uneventful trip. So, get back, I take the car, 
unload it, put it on the, on the driveway. And that night, I can't tell you how many people stop by to say hi. They want to check out the car, take a look. Every relative that lived nearby me wanted to go for a ride. So we basically took everybody for a drive and uh, enjoyed a nice night of driving, you know, friends, family, kids, uh, brother-in-laws, people, everybody that was around. We just all went out for a drive and enjoyed the car. And there, shortly thereafter, I basically handed the car over to my mechanic, who then assisted with, uh, with servicing and getting a lot of the stuff up to date. Because at that time, obviously, there was a, there was a series of service records. Actually, is when I did a little digging, there was a bunch of records on the car. I just had to go to the dealer for it. I was able to get some of the records. And so the way it worked out, there was actually only a short span of time where there were no records. And that was a little bit at the end of the previous owner and this new owner's uh, ownership because he only had it for a couple months. So the way it worked out, there wasn't a long span with no records, but there was a little bit. So I just wanted to make sure everything was cleaned up. So I took a by mechanic. We did oil service, transmission fluid and filter changes, uh, air filters, fuel the whole nine, you know, we looked at, we went through everything and cleaned it all up, looked at the diff, checked all the, the brakes and the structure of, of the entire car and everything was checked, checked nice, checked good. And so that is basically my story, everybody. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you because everybody has their own unique story. My story was full of sordid people and affairs, to be honest. Um, I did ultimately wind up with a great car and uh, you know, like they say, no pain, no gain. And there was a little bit of pain getting the car here, but at the end of the day, you know, if there's one thing I can advise you guys on when you're buying your, your first supercar or your fifth supercar, if it's a Lambo you're looking at or a Porsche or whatever, I still recommend getting it inspected. You see, part of the reason I was able to negotiate that low dollar amount, the purchase price on this car, was because there was no service records and there was no dealer within 12 hours to even look at this car. So we couldn't even drive it down the road, take it to a Lambo dealer. Like it wasn't even a possibility without transporting it a significant distance. We actually couldn't even serve, get it serviced or get it inspected. And so because of that, he wasn't too willing on dishing out to have that taken care of. At the same time, I said to him, I said, look, you know, I'm going on uh, on a limb here, but to be honest, I don't know what this car is about. I don't know if the clutch is ready to go. I don't know if the brakes are gone or if there's a, a leak or something more substantial here. I'm going on a big, big gamble here. And he couldn't argue with that. The reality is he had no way to, to dispute that. And this, the, the sad reality was, even from my perspective, I had no way to get this car looked at. So I always had to kind of go out there on a little bit of a limb. I just wanted to share that little story with you. Um, you know, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I, uh, I just wanted to share because obviously you've probably seen a lot of my videos to date. So I just wanted to give you a little bit more in depth as to what I experienced, where I went, how much I paid. I want to share that with you because it's important that, you know, I share this information. A lot of you guys out there are interested in buying cars like this. And, you know, sometimes you wonder, is it, is it a gamble? You know, is it a risk buying a supercar? It doesn't have to be a risk. If you do all your inspections and you do your checks on it, it doesn't have to be a risk. It can actually be a very enjoyable experience. As a matter of fact, I think a big part of the whole experience is the hunt. I think that's, that's one of the most fun parts is searching for the car. Once you own it, it's great for sure. But the search for one, finding it, driving, looking at different cars, that's actually a whole lot of fun. So again, everybody, I hope you did enjoy the video. I just wanted to share with you my experience, which was very colorful to say the least. Uh, it wasn't your you know, traditional dealership experience where you walk in, yeah, I like it, take a drive and sign the check and off you go. That would be ideal. Mine was a little bit more sorted. But anyway, if you, if you like the video, please do make sure you subscribe below, guys. Like, comment, and don't forget to turn on those notifications. Because if you don't, you may not see my next video when it pops up. But again, please do make sure you come back for the next one. Subscribe, and we'll talk to you real soon. Okay, bye-bye.